of your two hands to heaven and worship the resurrected king it is Easter that differentiates Christianity from every other religion every other founder of religion none of them resurrected but our Lord Jesus Christ he died and was buried and on the third day he resurrected again can you lift up your voice and worship him give him praise give him adoration <laughs> he's worthy to be praised thank him for the work of redemption on the cross thank him for the victory on the cross thank him for the blood that was shed on the cross for the remission of our sin give him praise thank you mighty father Hallelujah. 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 
Magnify the Lord, and my spirit praise His name. For there could not be counted even in the grave. Jesus is Lord. For there could not. I say, Jesus is Lord. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Thank you, Jesus. The risen king, we say thank you. The one that died and death could not swallow. The one that gave up victory on the cross of Calvary. We worship you. We reference you. We magnify you. We give you praise. We give you adoration. Lord, I set our worship in the name of Jesus. Daddy, even as we go into your word, Lord, speak to us. Glorify your name. Let us not go back the same way we came. Let this day be special for us. Thank you, mighty Father. For we pray in Jesus' name. I thought somebody would say it better. Amen. Can you all please stand on your feet? I just wanted to take two prayer points very quickly. Beloved, on the cross, Jesus obtained victory over all his foes, over all his adversaries, over all his mockers. In that name that is above every other name, by the reason of the season, God will give you all round victory. So I want you to lift up your voice and fire the prayer and say, Father, say, Father, you resurrected and not a victory over your enemies. Oh God, my Father, give me victory over all my situation. Give me victory over all my foes. Give me victory over all my adversaries. Can you go ahead and talk to the Almighty God? Is somebody praying this morning? <laughs> Ask God to give you victory also. Jesus obtained victory on the third day. <laughs> he arose from the grave. <laughs> Death could not hold the captive. Masuta Labranda. Can you also cry to Him to give you total victory over all your enemies? Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus. My name, we pray. Amen. Lastly, I want you to lift up your two hands and fire this last prayer arrow with all your strength. Beloved, nothing could stop Jesus. The enemy could not stop him. Death could not stop him. Nothing could stop him. Principalities could not stop him. Satan cannot stop him. His agent cannot stop him. In that name that is above every other name. Where God has ordained to take you, the height God has ordained to lift you in life, no power will be able to stop you. And so you lift up your well and say, Father, because death could not stop Jesus. Oh God, my Father, 
let nothing be able to stop my greatness let nothing be able to stop my breakthrough let nothing be able to stop my blessings let nothing be able to stop my promotion let nothing be able to stop my marriage let nothing be able to stop my fruitfulness let nothing be able to stop my increase can you lift up your voice and touch your mighty god is somebody praying this morning sickness will not stop you diseases will not stop you your enemy cannot stop you kali basuka talia rei kado kasantali mama kashantali Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Wherever my father will find a very loud amen. In that name that is above every other name. God that gave victory to Jesus on Mount Calvary. This morning, we give you victory over all your enemy in the name of Jesus. Over all your foes in the name of Jesus, over your situation in the name of Jesus, over your challenges in the name of Jesus, over every difficulty in your life in the name of Jesus, over all your problems in the name of Jesus. And because death could not stop Jesus, for someone that will say a louder amen this morning, it is too late for your enemy to stop you in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall stop your lifting. Nothing shall stop your fruitfulness. Nothing shall stop your increase. Nothing shall stop your breakthrough. Nothing shall stop your blessing. Nothing shall stop your testimony. Nothing shall stop your laughter. In the name of Jesus. Let the power of resurrection work for you this morning. In the name of God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just want to say that it may three powerful I want to go. Amen. Two. Amen. And uh, jam your hands together and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Celebrate, 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 celebrate. Celebrate the Almighty, the Almighty, the Almighty. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, shake hands with the fellow beside you left and I say, Happy Easter. Tell him or her, Happy Easter. Hallelujah. And let's be seated in his presence. Hallelujah. Uh, beloved brethren, like I did announce in the first service, you know, after Easter Sunday, by Easter Monday, in those days when we are in the orthodox, uh, we used to meet Jesus somewhere. Where is it? Okay. We used to go to Galilee to meet Jesus. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow morning we'll be coming to Galilee. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are going to be having a special edition of uh, Easter uh, Good Morning Holy Spirit Anointing Service to be handled by our very, very uh, 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 great uh, Father in the Lord, a man of God uh, that we respect so much, uh, the regional evangelist for Region 19, Pastor Ayola Adeoju. Put your hand together for Jesus. Is a moving Bible. Uh, he's a great man of God indeed. Uh, like I told those that were in first service, he's actually supposed to be here this morning, but for some exigencies, he pleaded with us to be here tomorrow morning. Uh, let's try to be here tomorrow morning. And one thing I know is that your joy will be full. Well, time is not on our side. I need to move with just speed. The power of resurrection. Somebody's life will change today. Listen to me. I am not saying it to excite you. I'm saying it based on conviction that I have. That at least one person here today, your life will not remain the same. One word from the law <laughs> that will transform your life 360 degree turn around. We locate you in the name of Jesus. The power of resurrection. Galatia chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Christ had redeemed us from the cause of the law. Be made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessings 
of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Beloved, one of the power of resurrection is the power of provisions thereof. Don't forget it's our month of the great provider. In our text, it is explicitly stated that the reason why Jesus went to the cross for it is written God is he that is hand upon the tree is so that the blessings of Abraham may come on the Gentiles remembered Abraham was the man that had an encounter with the Jehovah Jireh. If you read Genesis 22, verse 7 to 14, the story we all know very well, God had just instructed Abraham to sacrifice his only begotten son, the son he waited for for 25 years to him. And in obedience to God, Abraham took his son Isaac, the covenant son, and was taking him to the location God had prescribed for him to be sacrificed. But as Simon said as Isaac was, he didn't know what was in the offering. And so, at a point he asked his father, I can see the fire, but I can't see the lamb. How are we going to do the sacrifice? And by verse 8, of that Genesis 22, Abraham responded to his son. He says, God will do what? We provide. God will do what? We provide. And true to that declaration, as Abraham was about laying the knife on the son, God appeared. Called Abraham by name and provided his needed lamb for sacrifice. And then and there, in verse 14 of that Genesis 22, Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh. And he said to this day, in the month of the law, it shall be seen. Praise the Lord. So, Abraham had an encounter with the Jehovah Jireh. And it was at that encounter that a particular blessing was pronounced on Abraham. This blessing I call irreversible blessing. This blessing I call a generational blessing. This blessing I call a covenant blessing. What do I call the blessing? Number one. Huh? Irreversible blessing. Number two is what kind of blessing? Generational blessing. And number three is what kind of blessing? Covenant blessing. Can I decree over somebody here today? In that name that is above every other name. You begin to swim in irreversible blessings. Yeah. Huh. The way you are saying amen, you don't know what is in the offing. I decree one more time for someone that will say a louder amen. The blessings of God upon you will be a generational blessing. Yeah. I decree in that name that is above every other name. The blessings of God upon you will be a covenanted blessing. So it was a unique blessing. Why is it an irreversible blessing? If you read that verse 34 and 35 of that text, God said, 
Verse 15 and 18 of that Genesis 22, verse 15 and 18. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, and did what? By myself. Who is speaking, sir? I said, Who is speaking? What did he say? By myself have I sworn. See it who? For because thou hast done this thing and hast not with God thy son, thy only son, that in blessing, I will do what? Oh my God. Are you still with me? That in what? In blessing I will. And in multiplying I will. Say, thy he said, I will multiply thy seed at the stars of the heaven and at the sun which is upon the seashore and they shall, and thy seed shall be what? Shall possess the gate of his enemy. I thought you put your hand together for Jesus. <laughs> Beloved, look at me, sir. Look at me, man. This is the blessing God pronounced on Abraham. Now at the cross, because Jesus died and resurrected, God said that blessing is no longer for only Abraham. That you and I are now qualified by the power of resurrection to have the same blessing. I thought you would celebrate. And you know what? As soon as God pronounced his blessing upon Abraham, God began to manifest as Jehovah Jireh, supply all his needs and meeting all his needs. And the Bible recorded that Abraham was blessed greatly and he became great. You were blessed, how? If you don't believe me, Look at the testimony of the servant of Abraham in Genesis 24, verse 34 to 35. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. He said, And the Lord has blessed my master. How? Oh my God. How? 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 Can I ask you, sir? Can I ask you, man? How will God going to bless you? No, I, I am, am talking, talking about you now. now. Not, not your, your neighbor. neighbor. So, so let your neighbor, neighbor know. How is God going to bless you? Yes. Tell your neighbor, do you hear me? Yes. He said he didn't hear you. How is God going to bless you? Yes. Ask your neighbor, did you hear me? Yes. What did he say? Yes. He said yes. yes. Tell him one more time. How is God going to bless you? Yes. You see, God did what? Bless him greatly, and he's become great. And I've given him what flocks and heads, and silver and gold, and men silver and men silver, and carnals and asses. Because he pronounced that blessing upon Abraham, he began to provide for him. And on the Calvary tree, because it is written. Because is he that is hung upon the tree. Jesus went on the cross. Jesus did what? Went on the cross. Died for you and I. That this kind of blessing can be yours. When? I say when? I say when? That is why it is in Christ Jesus that every one of us are blessed. It is Christ Jesus that we are what? We are blessed. That's, That's why in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 He said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ Who had blessed us With all spiritual blessing In heavenly places In Christ Jesus And that's why Paul said in Philippians 4 19 But my God Shall do what? Supply all your need According to who? His riches in glory By who? By Christ Jesus And if you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 it says for ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for whose sake huh? he became what poor 
die through his poverty might be rich. So the implication of this is that you are already blessed. I say you are already blessed. As a child of God, and all your needs will be provided for. You are blessed spiritually. You are blessed soulishly. You are blessed bodily. You are blessed materially. You are blessed financially. The only thing is that many of us are not able to accept this blessing. Sir, ma'am, I am telling you authoritatively. God bless me is not a prayer point any longer. As far as Jesus went on the cross and he died and he arose, you are already blessed. Tell your neighbor, I am already blessed. He didn't hear you. Tell to the next one. Tell him or her, I am blessed. Tell him you are opportune to be sitting beside me. Next time you may not sit beside me. Believe that shout hallelujah. Uh, is a husband telling the wife you will not sit beside me? <laughs> or is a wife telling the husband you will not sit beside me? Eh? What oh God, God are doing together? together. Let, Let no blessing put us under. Let somebody shout hallelujah. So husband and wife, tell your husband and tell your wife we are blessed. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. The question is, why is the blessing not manifesting? If God have said, the reason why Jesus went to the cross is so that the blessings of Abraham may come on the Gentile. Why is it not manifesting? I told those in the first service, and I've said it here before. You may have your money in the bank. Am I correct? If you don't know the pin of your ATM, can you assess it? You can have your money in the bank. If your signature is wrong on the check slip, can you get it? If you have a landed property, an asset, and the title document does not carry your name, do, are you the owner? Beloved, this morning, the message of God to you and I this morning is that you must address the identity issue. The what? The what? The, the what? what? Sama. How does God know you? From the bottom of your heart, sir. If you stand one on one before God, how does God know you? Does he know you as his own? That you are his child? Does he know you as righteous or a sinner? How does God know you? God know Abraham as a friend. He says, shall I hide from Abraham what I do? Knowing that he will raise his children in the will of the Lord. Beloved, identity is one of the reasons why many of us cannot assess this blessing. Take it or leave it. Oh, you bear Peter. You bear John. You even bear Paul. You bear Timothy. You bear Solomon. You bear David. But how does God know you? Remember, the day God pronounced the blessing upon Abraham, Abraham he called Abraham, Abraham by, by name. name. The Bible says, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham. Don't forget, before God called Abraham, he changed his name from Abraham to Abraham. Have you gone through a change? The reason why Jesus died on the cross is so that you can have a change. It's so that you can be redeemed. It's so that you can be saved. 
and they said that issue of identity is addressed sir ma even though you are already blessed you can't accept the blessing check your bible god knows jacob quite all right yet jacob stood before god and god was still asking jacob what is your name do you know why the name Jacob was bearing us at the time God was asking what is his name. It's not yet a sanctified name. It's not yet a redeemed name. And so God now gave him a name that is redeemed. He now called him what? Israel. He said the reason why you have been suffering 20 years without reward is because your name is Jacob. Jacob means 419. Froster. Israel means you have prevailed. Somebody, Somebody is listening to me here today. today. You, you will prevail, prevail over poverty. Yeah. You will prevail over affliction. Yeah. You will prevail over your enemy. Yeah. If you are able to say a louder amen. Yeah. That's why in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 it says, Have you predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will? Have you been identified? If God stands before you today, can he say you are righteous? Can you say, can God say you have been saved? You can pretend before pastor. You can pretend before brethren. But between you and God, have you addressed identity issue? The more you delay in identifying with Christ, the more you delay you assessing your generational blessing, your covenanted blessing, and your irreversible blessing. Number two, how can I assess this blessing? And I want to spend some time here, even though I don't have time. Sir, ma, you must believe. You must do what? You must believe. You must have faith. You must, you must believe the word of God that you are hearing. If God say you are blessed, do you believe you are really blessed? Is your spirit in agreement with the word of God that you are blessed? Hello? Why? Hebrew 10, 13 says, Now the just shall live by faith. And Hebrew 11 says, But without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please him. Do you know there are evidences that you have faith? There are what? That you have faith. The first evidence of your faith is your thought. The, the first evidence of your faith, faith is your, your thought. Sir, ma, what is the thought of your heart? What are you thinking about yourself? The death of your heart. What is the thought of your life? Concerning your situation, what is the thought? Don't forget. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, He says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he, sir. For as many of us that are here today, take this from here this morning. Take this from here. From here this morning. If your thoughts and your mindset can change, if you can have a paradigm shift from today, your life can never remain the same. Listen to me, sir. The more you think that you are poor, you remain poor. The more you think that you are useless, you remain useless. The more you think that you are barren, you remain barren. The more you think that you are helpless, you remain helpless. But listen to me. If God can tamper with your thoughts and your thoughts can change instantly, everything about your life will change. And let me give you an example. In Mark chapter 5, the woman with the issue of blood has suffered 12 solid years. The Bible says she suffered in the hands of physicians to the extent that she became impoverished. But a day came, her thoughts changed. And do you know what she said? If only I can touch the hem 
of his carrier. Do you know instantly that her thought changed, her healing came. In Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son, how could righteously spend all that his father gave to him? Everything about him had a drastic turnaround around when his thoughts changed. That he said to himself, How many are the servants in my father's house? I will arise, I will go to my father. And I will say to my father, I have sinned against thee, and I am not worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your servants. From that minute, everything about him changed. Can I tell you something today? Can I tell you something today? If your thought can change here today, that you are no longer poor, you are blessed. Sir, no demon from your father's house can stop you from being blessed. No principality, no power in heaven and on earth that can stop you. So when Bible says, Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law, be made curse unto you. For it is written, curse is he that is hung upon the tree. That the blessings of who? Abraham may come upon the from that minute if your spirit man agreed receive it and accept it and your thought process change you are made sir step out of this door today with a different thinking with a different mindset stop looking down on yourself let no man talk you down let no man write you off. Stand shoulder tall and say to yourself, I am great. Say to yourself, I am blessed. Why? Because God has said so. Not just you. You may be a tenant in one room apartment. You can step out of this door this morning with a thought that I am a landlord of mansions. And listen to me, sir. In no time, it will manifest. So, what am I saying? The power of resurrection is a spirit. And that spirit is a black spirit. If you can absorb the spirit, if you can assimilate the spirit, and allow it to change your thoughts, hear me, sir. Hear me, ma'am. From today, Everything you desire, everything you want, will come to you. When? I say when. I say when. Let me give you one more. I will, I will release the rest at our service. Listen to me. Have you placed the man on the word of God? Have you done what? Have you placed the man? Place a demand on your divine blessings and they will manifest. What did I just say? Place a demand. If you have read that this irreversible blessing, this covenant blessing, this generational blessing that was pronounced on Abraham by the reason of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, that now made the cross empty, grave empty. That that blessing is now yours. The next thing for you to do is to place a demand. Spiritually, physically, bodily, financially, materially, you can place what? A demand. How do you demand? How do you demand? You demand for what is yours. Abraham's blessings are yours. How often do you demand for it? Some of us have been intimidated by the devil that our mouths are closed. I hope that will change this morning. I hope that will change this morning. You wonder why Jesus said in John 14, 14, If ye shall ask, what? Anything in my name, I will do it. Listen to me, sir. It is good for people to pray for you. 
It is fantastic that pastors should pray for you. But listen to me. It is more important that you pray for yourself. And that is why one of the benefits of the cross is that as Jesus gave up the ghosts on the cross, the veil that was covering the Holy of the Holy was torn asunder so that you and I can have direct access to who? To this almighty God. Sir, man, what is delaying your blessing? What is hindering your blessing? God is expecting you to place a demand. And listen to me. There is no... He said, if ye shall ask. What? Do you know what anything is? Do you know what anything is? I mean anything. That's why I pity those of you that are laughing at me when I say my private jet. At least two. To start with. See the way you laugh. See the way you laugh. I'm just giving you as an example because it's going to come to pass. Please don't come and borrow it. Let somebody shout at me. Sir, ma, are you ready to place it, ma? Stand on your feet. Are you ready? Maybe I should ask you, are you blessed at all? Do you believe you are a blessed man? Do you believe you are a blessed woman? Lift up your two hands and say, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the power of resurrection. Can you magnify the Lord? Can you give God praise? Can you give God adoration? Can you say sweet things to Him? Oh, when I remember what God has done on the cross for me, I cannot but celebrate. I cannot but jubilate. I cannot but bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead, open your mouth and give God praise. Thank Him in conviction of what He has done. Masupa la talia. Zalekete gazwantali makasantalia. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Do you know why I'm speaking with authority? With high level conviction. Because I have seen God raise men from nowhere because of his word. When God wants to bless you, he wants to bless you because he wants to fulfill his word. For it is written, his word will not return back to him for. Well, have you addressed the identity issue? All eyes closed. I don't know how many of us that want to identify with him today. And say, Lord, I want to be your true son. I want to be your true, true daughter. I want to be daughter of Zion. Son of Zion. I want you to know me, sir. And say you come to him. And he has promised that nobody that will come to him that he will cast away. So the ball is in your court. If you are here this morning, you want to identify with Jesus so that you can accept the blessing that he has transferred to you. Can you wave your hand to heaven? Just lift up your right hand and just wave it to heaven like this. Just wave it to heaven. If you are that fellow, just, just wave, wave it to heaven. It's not man to see, it's for God in heaven to see where you are. Just wave it to heaven. God bless you, sir. God bless you. If you are waving your hand, can you join me here at the altar? If you are waving that hand, just be waving it and come and join me here at the altar. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. As many of us that are raised, that are waving our hand, can you come to the altar of God? It's between you and him. You must address the identity issue. He changed the name of Abraham to Abraham and release blessing upon him. You must allow him to change you. You must allow him to change you or else you can't accept the blessing. If you are coming, please come. Please come, please come. And as you come, begin to ask him for mercy. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me this morning. I want to identify with you. Take my name completely. Sanctify my name. Wash me by the blood. Consecrate me this morning. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. If you want to join them, please join them now. If you are not sure that you can stand before God one on one and God will say you are saved, come out now and be saved. Come on now, be saved. You can pretend before me, you can pretend before God. Come and settle it. It's your identity. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we are praying. Precious Father, I want to thank you for your children. Who knows that indeed they are not yet identified with you. And here they are. They want their name deleted from the book of causes, the book of death and destruction. 
and that their name may be written in the book of life, the book of the blessed, the book of the prosperous. Lord, from today, I ask, by that blood that was shed on my cavalry, delete their name from the book of death, book of destruction, book of poverty, book of failure, book of frustration. Rewrite their name today in the book of the blessed, the book of life, the book of prosperity the book of success let their name be written boldly in the name of Jesus and at your returning let them pray with you thank you mighty father for we pray in Jesus name congratulations sir, congratulations man can you please follow that my sister one minute and then you join us back, let's celebrate them let's celebrate the king of kings hallelujah everybody lift up your two hands as they Go and settle with the counselor. Lift up your two, everybody. I don't know what you want to demand from God this morning. This is resurrection money. There is an Easter package from heaven for somebody. There is something God a package for somebody, for one family, for one brother, for one sister. Lift up your two head to him and say, Father. Oh, the way you say that, Father, is too low. Say, Father. I play demand on my divine blessings. Oh God, my Father, release them to me now. Let my status change. Let my life change. Let my family change. Let my business change. Let my career change. Let my destiny change. Open your mouth. Place a demand. Place a demand, a demand, a demand on your divine blessing that will be transferred by the reason of the power of resurrection into your life. Upon you as a gentile. Open your mouth. Ask for something extraordinary. Ask for something great. Ask for something great glorious eh? ask for something unprecedented eh? this is this is let God do something he has never done, done for you before. before let God deliver an Easter package to you open your mouth and touch to the Almighty God thank you mighty father in Jesus mighty name we are praying can you stretch out your hands to the altar wherever my father will hear a loud amen whatsoever you have asked in his name for he said, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Before sunset today, let God do your own. In the name of Jesus. An Easter blessing. An Easter package. So that you have never received in your life. In that name that is above every other name. Let it come to you. In the name of Jesus. Physically it will come. Spiritually it will come, bodily it will come, materially it will come, financially it will come, ministerially it will come, to your family it will come, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three powerful amen like thunder. Want to go? Two. And amen.